500 platform uh, machines. Uh, if you're familiar with M series in our loader product line, we've been slowly coming out with new models since about 2008. We started with our 600 series, which is two skids and two track loaders, and then 2010 we came out with our 700 and our 800, and now we have our 500 platform. And this one's really special because it's kind of closing out the M series. It's the last. Um, part of M series for us for the most part. And these machines represent um, the biggest part of Bobcat's product line and, and probably the most significant skid loaders and compact track loader models in the world. These have been our biggest sellers in this size and we've kind of been around the longest and, and been a market leader. So they're a very, very popular machine amongst our, com our company and our customers. And um, so that's, that's why they're, they're so special. The most significant things about M-Series is the cat. And there's a bunch of things about it. The first thing we always talk about, and you always see it front-facing in our literature, is that it's a cab-forward design. So if we had a K-Series here, and I'm sorry that we don't, and we lined them up right next to each other, and you guys can come closer if you want. You don't have to be way back there if it helps you to be able to see. But um, the K-Series cab, the back of it would be about right here. So we physically move this cab forward. The front door is also different. The door itself is slightly larger, um, but the main thing about it, and you might want to come over this way a little bit to see it, this bottom part of the door, the bottom part of the cab, we call it the threshold. I don't know why we came up with that name, it's just it's what we call it. We've lowered this threshold three or four inches, and that does two things for people. One, um, it just makes the machine easier to get in and out of. You don't have to lift your leg as high. And as a test tomorrow, if you're wearing jeans and it's 90 degrees out, your legs start to sweat, and all of a sudden you don't have a lot of flexibility, and this step right here becomes pretty high. So it just makes it easier. And additionally, you don't have material here anymore. So um, before, you know, you can't see through a cab brace, whereas now you have that open area. And it just looks like it's little, but when you're trying to peer down at that bucket and see the cutting edge, it makes a humongous difference. So, a couple of things in terms of size and visibility. Additionally, um, sound is quite a bit different in the M-Series cab. It's reduced up to 60% depending on the M-Series model. And the way we did that is um, through several different, I wouldn't say small things, but it's not just one thing that created that. The first thing is the foam, the sound deadening foam that we use in the cab, beneath the cab, etc. We've added it in a lot of areas and the foam itself has become a little bit better. So the best example is um, the whole bottom of the cab is covered in foam. And believe it or not, that's where a lot of the sound that gets in the cab comes from, is from the hydraulic or the hydrostatic area right underneath the cab, where the operator is. Um, our machines through our tests, and this is one we did on our Bobcat Advantage series um, that you can watch if you want, uh, our machine has the best in class cab pressurization. So what that really helps for is um, the pressurization keeps dirt, a, a certain amount of dirt and debris out of the cab. So it keeps you cleaner as an operator. Now, if you wear your brand new white golf pants in here and go work in a dusty application all day, you're gonna be sad because your pants will still be ruined. It's not perfectly sound. You can look at this, this machine has eight, ten hours on it and I didn't clean the cab out very much just so you could get an idea and this is a machine I had on the dairy and the cab. So there, there definitely is some dust in there. But so how do we get a good amount of pressurization in our cab? It comes from having a tight cab. There's not a lot of holes, cracks, crevices, etc. Because what you have to be able to do is inject enough air in the cab to, to where you're pushing more air in the cab than air is going out, right? So you have to have a tight cab in order to do it, and you get that air from either your heater, your air conditioning, or just running your fan. So that's what's blowing the air in. You have to have the cab enclosure. But if you have big holes in your cab, um, you can't put enough air in it to create pressurization. So as soon as I crack a window, your pressurization is gone. Um, but we talk a lot about cab pressurization in the industry, and I figured I'd just give it a 